Senate plenary was disrupted this Wednesday at about 11.30 a.m. after a gang of hoodlums breached National Assembly security and entered the Senate chambers, causing pandemonium. The suspected hoodlums or thugs believed to be supporters of recently suspended Senator representing Delta Central Ovie Omo Agege attacked the sergeant at arms and made away with the mace. Now, what does this action amount to? And what are the implications for Nigeria's democracy and an institution like the National Assembly? This is what we shall be looking at on Nigeria Today. Welcome and thanks for joining us on the midweek episode of the program. My name is Kande Daniel. Well, in the studio with me are two guests to talk about today's disruption of plenary at the Senate. First, I'd like to introduce Barista Shaba Ibrahim to my far left. He is the former chairman of Nigeria Bar Association Lokoja branch. You're welcome, Barrister. Good evening. And sitting it's my next pleasure to, him, to be here. Sitting next to him, to my immediate left, is my other guest, a public affairs analyst, Jide Ojo. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thanks for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. Well, gentlemen, if what we witnessed at the National Assembly earlier today was a scene from a Nigerian movie, we would uh, quickly dismiss it as an exaggeration and we would laugh over it. But sadly, it was real. So it's not funny. Barrister, what would be your first description from your perspective of today's incident at the Senate? Uh, I honestly, it's a sad day for democracy. What happened today in the Senate it paints a gory picture of the deplorable situation, security situation in Nigeria. I personally think that there has to be a very serious inquest into what I believe was a security breach because the hallowed chambers of the National Assembly is not easily available to such kind of brazen attacks without some form of compromise coming somewhere. I can, I can say that with some, I mean, considerable degree of certainty. Because if you look at what happened today, apart from being an affront on democracy, Okay, let, let, me, let, let me thrash out, sorry, yes. sir. Let me thrash out, first of all, the issue of security, the breach of security yes. and the, your suggested need yes. for an inquest. Yes. Mr. Joe, do you think this should be investigated? Investigation is an understatement. Uh, I really do. I'm short of words to use to describe what... Because I was in the National Assembly about three, four weeks ago, and I knew what I went through, assessing the place. It was almost impregnable. Uh, you can't drive in. Uh, you have to get a badge. You, you can't go with your phones. So many things, security precautions that were taken. I was, I was telling my guests on that day that this, this is too much of, um, of an exercise because I really didn't know where I was going within the, within the system, and my phone had been collected, so I was like flying blind. I was asking everywhere, who, where is this office and all of that. So, to now watch whatever characters they are called, assessing not even the premises, I'm not talking of the premises of the National Assembly, I'm talking of the allo chamber of the Senate, and daring, before camera, live cameras, daring everybody, it wasn't Nicodemusly done, it was done in the open. Everybody saw what happened. The press had a field day. 
snapping away, filming and recording everything for us to see. It's like a movie from, uh, it, it, it's, it's an horror film. Because, you know the worst things for me, it has also brought us to ignominy before the international community. Unfortunately for us, there are members of Ghanaian parliament on a parliamentary visit to the National Assembly who witnessed everything that happened. So it, 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 it's not something you can sweep under the carpet. So the, the need for an inquest, the need for investigation, the need for unraveling of how these people, no matter the number, how they managed to beat all the security measures within the National Assembly, assess the inner chamber while the session was going on. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the part of the explanation we got uh, in the course of the day uh, was that they had come in with a sitting senator and probably uh, walked in that way, but broke in at the entrance of the chambers, you know, but that is neither here nor there. Um, so there was a breach. There was a beating of security either way. So and can, can, uh, I have heard various descriptions. Can I say yeah. something? Mm -hmm. if, if actually those hoodlums walked in with the suspended senator, then there is a compromise. Whoever was at the door should not have allowed, it, uh, should not have allowed this, the suspended senator access to the inner chamber. They have a rule. Rule 22 of the Senate says you cannot even assess the, the premises. Let not alone your own office. Exactly. You can't assess your office. So if you cannot assess your office, how then did you manage to assess? And this suspension was in the public domain. This was not carried out yesterday. It has been on since last week. So the, the, everybody in that Senate, the security, the security men at the door, at the, at the gate, knew that the man is under suspension. How did he manage? To walk into the and not only walking alone, walking with some hoodlums, and nobody checked them. Not even to say the oh, Senate is in session, you cannot go in with the senator. Let's even assume that uh, you know, Esprit de Corps, they have allowed the suspended senator access into the chamber. Mm. No other person could have walked in with him. For many, many, many questions, actually. There are many questions security-wise. But I think because of time, we should quickly move uh, to the point that uh, uh, Barista Ibrahim was trying to raise. The political implications. The political implication. We've heard it said it's an attack on democracy. Uh, is it an attack on democracy? And if it is, did it, it succeed? It, it, it is an attack on democracy in the sense that the, the, the legislature represents sovereignty all those people who are gathered there represent every segment of this country the senatorial district so you could say nigeria was represented there and one hallmark of democracy is the parliament the separation of power the executive even when, even when there are interregnums you, the only one that goes the difference between a military dictatorship of government and a democracy is the parliament. Or the because, absence of it. Or, or the absence of it. Because it, as, it, as it is, if you see under the military rule, the executive is in place, the judiciary is not tampered with. It is the legislature that is, that is I mean, that is uh, sent back in, suspended, so to speak. So, an attack of the nature experience today i'm still short of words <laughs> experience today is an affront on democracy it is the height of impunity on the part of whoever orchestrated that attack and i like to say with considerable degree of certainty that somebody something snapped as far as security wise if there wasn't a compromise then i, 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 I i'll be very surprised we need to unravel that mystery because uh, this is not the first time democracy has been assaulted this way we've had experiences we've even had within the senate itself people who wanted to escape impeachment or things like that run away with the maze mm -hmm. some even did as much as hit them in some shrines within their own localities that is okay but what we have seen this violent invasion of a parliament in session when parliamentarians from a sister country is, I mean, were on a visit, 
is to say the least unbecoming. It has portrayed us in a very bad light within the international community. This is with, without prejudice to whatever must have orchestrated the, the reasons you might think came, I mean, uh, uh, led to the suspension or otherwise of Omar Agege. That is a different kettle of fish. But to be seized of sufficient temerity to dare this, I don't think... There is a popular saying that when you see a man dancing alone in the market square, the drummers are not too far behind. Mm. I, I, that is why I call for an inquest. I think we, we, enough of this making ourselves a laughing stock in the international community, I mean, in the face of the whole world. Nigerian democracy, each time we can say it's fledging, it's fledging. When are we going to grow, for God's sake? This is, we've had, I mean, uninterrupted a flow of uh, exchange of power for like five or six, uh, 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 I mean, uh, yes. And so I think that it is enough learning period. We must be able to, to, to do things in line with internationally acceptable norms and standards. Enough of this. Uh, hmm. All right, Mr. Ojo, in terms of having managed the situation today, um, the, we heard the Deputy Senate President presiding um, say uh, the, the National Assembly was not intimidated by what happened. Do you think those were mere words or the situation was managed well enough for insufficient harm to be done to the legislature? Um, I want to give kudos to the National Assembly. Uh, in spite of what happened, they reconvened. They didn't even uh, suspend the session. They, 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 they had a short break for like 30 minutes, had an executive session, got another miss, and carry on legislative duties as if nothing had happened. But we wish it never happened. We wish it was a dream. But it's real. Mm. And, and the reality of it, because it has gone into history book, and you know the world has become a global village, so much so that I'm sure if you turn on to any other international media today, Nigeria is on the lead of the invasion of the parliament by, by hoodlums, talks, or whatever. It, it, it's, it's just, it, it, it begs us belief that that could still happen in 21st century. Uh, but in terms of managing the crisis, I think I, I love my cap for, for the Senate and for the two chambers because you see, we saw the House of Rest members suspending their own sitting for like 30 minutes, walking into the Senate in solidarity and telling them we are together, we will not allow these people to have the last say. And, and the good thing is that wherever it was, I hope the, 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 the stolen mess is recovered, but at least they were able to procure or uh, sort and get another uh, mess to continue their legislative duties. B Barrister <laughs> Ibrahim, I'm eager to know this thing about the mace. Yeah. How important, how significant, briefly speaking, how significant, how important, and uh, how replaceable? Because we got another mace. Yes. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, the mace as it is, is a, is a symbol of authority. It has come to, it's one of those uh, inheritance of, I mean, those colonial legacies that we've been left with mm -hmm. that somehow we've not been able to extricate ourselves from. But when, whichever way you look at it, it is still that it symbolizes authority. That is the heart of the authority of the city. And to go after it is to go for the jugular of the legislature as it were. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is replaceable. Replaceable in the sense that if you took away one, if there are spare mazes, I mean, you, you bring in the other one and continue your legislative business. But I think the intention of the attackers or the assailants was to disrupt proceedings and uh, maybe cause as much embarrassment as they are able to procure on not just the legislature, but Nigeria as a whole. And to a considerable extent, I think they succeeded. Uh, Senator Kwame Madu was uh, being charitable with words when he said that they were not, even if they were not intimidated, there is no rational mind that wouldn't be shaken 
by the brazenness exhibited by those assailants. And I think that we really need to get out of the international scene. We can't be on the international scene for the wrong reason always. Nigeria has had enough of all this kind of shenanigans and uh, we, we, we need to up our game if we want to be taken seriously by any country. No nation, for instance, you're talking of democracy, you're talking about investors, you're talking about all sorts of, I mean, all sorts of uh, capital inflow and things like that. Nobody will come and invest in an unstable democracy. If you attack the parliament, you attack democracy. And people are quick to read meanings into it. Meanings even disproportionate to the original effect of what has been done. So that is the fear I have for the goings on as it is. Oh, okay, gentlemen, we'll get right back into the discussion after this break. We'll pause here and go to the streets where we take some responses from Nigerians on their opinion about what happened at the Senate plenary today. It's a big slap to the old Nigeria because if the Ulums can enter the National Assembly without restriction, without any checking, and they can went ahead, take the mace, it's a big problem to us. To me, our security, I think we have a problem. One, because for, let's say, a huge organization like National Assembly, for Ulums to break into, it's, it's, a, it's an insult to Nigerians. It's an insult because, one, I think our securities need to come up and let them be co cooperative to each other. Nothing like fighting each other say this is DSS, this is Nigeria, this is army. They are all serving Nigerians. A place like Abuja, which is the capital of Nigeria, and not only Abuja, a national assembly. You see such a thing happen, it's very unfortunate. In fact, the government need to take drastic action in this security aspect. It's actually a dent on Nigerian image where people we are looking up to our leaders where, where people we are looking up to people we take as role model the young ones coming up looking forward to becoming a leader in this nation you understand the also witness what is happening the seizure of that mess shows that nigeria as a country we are still very very backward I remember during Tuba or Kadibo, something similar uh, to this happened. And uh, from my evaluation of this, I think it doesn't go well uh, for the development of Nigeria democracy. The whole situation is, I don't know, it's terrifying. We're all scared, but it's an unfortunate thing. And we hope things get better. Well, back in the studio, the federal government has uh, reacted officially to the Assembly, National Assembly invasion earlier today. The federal government has expressed shock at the invasion of the National Assembly and the subsequent snatching of the Senate mace by thugs. In a statement, the Minister of Information and Culture, Elijah Lai Mohammed, says security agencies have been directed to immediately unravel the circumstances surrounding the breach of security that led to the invasion. He says the security around the National Assembly complex will be reinforced to prevent a reoccurrence. Well, back to the discussion on Nigeria today. Messrs. Shaba Ibrahim and Jidojo are still with us. Gentlemen, uh, you could see from the streets that Nigerians uh, not only embarrassed, uh, most of them are actually angry. So, we move on with our discussion from here. Um, what if, quickly, in one sentence each, what if we don't find, what if we don't find the mace that was taken away today? What if we don't find it? We, we already have one in place and, and, and that serves the purpose, same purpose. Is that what you think? The suspect, uh, the suspect is already in police custody from what the suspects are already there, so I expect that we'll find it. Mm. We'll find it. Good. Yeah. Let's now focus on the principal actor, the, the, the senator, senator that's yeah. on suspension, yeah. uh, Omar Agege. He's been apprehended by the 
police. Uh, what do we expect going forward? Well, I, I think that the, the expectation of Nigeria is that the mystery behind, as it is, is still a suspect. He's still a suspect. The police uh, have to do their investigation, the forensic uh, investigation, and they will get to the root of the matter. If there are a prima facie case established, then he should be charged to court. That's, that's the minimum that any decent society can ask for. If you, if you, if you graduate it further, like I believe there, are, there must be accomplices. It's not, it's not possible for him to do that. Let all those who have this, uh, this mindset be, be put to, let deterrence come to play. By the time you're able to success, because it's not the first time it's happening. It happened in the days of the Chuba Kadibos, in the days of uh, during the Obasanjo era, it was a very popular thing. In the various states, houses of assembly, we've seen them happen. It is because you see, love is nothing without sanctions. It is because nobody has really, the, 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 is, the full weight of the law has never really been brought on violators that you continue to have this kind of things happen. Mm. Reports reaching me indicate is to the effect that the distinguished senator was, remained seated in the chambers even for hours after the invasion. It was interesting actually I mean, watching him seated while while, yes, while I mean, the mace was being taken away. Honestly, there is more to I mean there, there is a lot to unravel in this matter. Whatever gave him that confidence must be unraveled. Otherwise, we're imperiled. Do you know if, what? Uh, if it is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, if you say hoodlums, I, I think is 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 a is a, I don't I don't even know what to call it. Amuagege cannot be a hoodlum for God's sake, but. To take desperation to this level is something that is frightening. And I think that we need to get to the root of it. What led to that, that brazenness? Mm -hmm. You understand? Whatever, wherever he, the source of that confidence must be unraveled. Yes. And I think yes. it is better I, for I'm, all of us. I'm about to ask Jide Ojo, uh, no matter how desperate you are, what do you think he, he, he hoped to achieve through that action? Couldn't there have been a better line of action like going to the court? He has gone to court, and that's why resorting to self-help is not even, it's a no-no. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, I, uh, and he, I don't think it will help his case. Uh, for those who have sympathy for him, uh, those who, and, and the interesting part, I, and I'm not uh, judging him guilty, uh, he, like uh, my learned colleague has said, he's still a suspect. Uh, we haven't know for certain whether he was the mastermind or the arrowhead, but it's just very circumstantial thing. He was there whilst having been suspended officially, not today. It's not like the suspension order was today. So we, we will say, okay, let today end, and then from tomorrow mm -hmm. it starts. It, and he's a member of Ethics and Privileges Committee mm. who also sat and suspended Senator Ali Udume mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So what goes on? If you are wrongfully sus suspended and the Senate decided to suspend you, let's even assume that the Senate has no power to suspend uh, a, a sitting senator as has been canvassed in some quarters. The, the only place you can get justice is the court, not on the streets, not by invading or sponsoring the invasion or having anything to do with the invasion of the national because for me I, I i i dissociate him on the surface i dissociate him from the invasion but the point is what was he doing in the allo chamber if your suspension has not been lifted Hold off. i mean we have a uh, jibrin uh, honorable jibrin suspended by the house of reps wrongfully or rightfully he didn't come back he didn't assess forcefully his office while he was on suspension. Mm. He's been recalled. Senator Ali Dume, under this same Senate, okay. eight Senate, was suspended. He went to court. At the end of the day, they found a political solution. He's sitting there now. Mm. Now, in your own case, what was he doing, seated, in that while the invasion was going on? Whether he has anything to do with it or not, the bottom line is that should he have been there 
or even be seen in within the precinct of all, the National all, Assembly. All right, as a way of rounding, you know, of the discussion, Barista, just in one sentence, does this put a question mark on the quality of representation we have at the National Assembly as of today? One sentence. That's a tight one. Definitely yes. <laughs> Definitely yes. It does. Anybody that has that kind of mindset, with due respect, shouldn't in the first place. I want to thank you, yeah. gentlemen, for coming on the program. That is Nigeria Today this Wednesday with Messrs. Shaba Ibrahim and Jide Ojo talking about the implications of today's disruption of Senate plenary. Thanks for watching and remember you can watch the program online at www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. My name is Kande Daniel. Bye-bye.